related issues, and the ICF as a platform for engaging with all stakeholders on the equal footing to amplify the youth voices. And the YCSG is open to all young professionals from around the world and other relevant stakeholders interested in, in internet governance issues, and regardless of their social status, gender, identity, sexual orientation, disability, race, ethnicity, etc. So it has been the YCSG very successful in securing a commitment for the HCF to include young panelists at the annual meetings, as well as organizing a series of panels of different levels of engagement, uh, producing clear, clear statements during the ICF closing plenary sessions. So here with us, I have uh, the main panelists. I will proceed to present the, the speakers. Uh, here with me is Emilia Zalewska from Youth ICF Poland, also from the Youth Coalition on Internet Governance. Uh, Lili Edinam Bochoe is from Ghana Youth ICF. Welcome also. And we have two online speakers that are Shena Fung from the Asia Pacific Youth ICF and Veronica Piccolo from ISOC Youth SG. Um, the ISOC Youth SG is the youth standing group. So I will start uh, bringing a question for all our panelists, starting from Lily. <laughs> so uh, can you bring your insights from your countries and regions regarding your experience in the participation of youth in internet governance? Right. Hi, everyone. And um, especially to those online, we are happy that regardless of the time zone and I mean, you've been away, you've been able to join. So just to um, appreciate the work that YCIG does for providing an entry avenue for young people into the space. I mean, if you are new to the space, I would suggest to you to look at the toolkit they put together, which is um, called the ABCs or for, for IGF newbies. It's called the ABCs for I, IGF newbies. And I think that it's really important. It's a, a good document that can start you off on a good role. So for insights on what is happening in the African region, I'll bring you um, on a journey from what is happening in the countries, what you've seen, what, is, um, what can be put together as like a best practice for uh, maybe other IGS who want to see things that are happening on the other side of the world. And then I can also share some insights from um, the, the IGF youth track that we held in Malawi. So I'll pull up that report in a short while, but just to say what uh, it looks like on the continent. So I coordinate the Ghana Youth Internet Governance Forum. And one of the things that we've seen is now the engagement of young people in processes around IG, not only when the event is already set up and ready to be run, but in the preparation. And I think it's one of the things that we've been advocating for um, long ago. So we've been saying that um, we, want, we don't want to just be attend attendees or we don't just want to be present in the sessions after they've been organized. We want to also bring our insights and to spotlight our needs so that they are captured in the agenda and they're discussed during the um, the the, the main IGF um, sessions when they, when they kickstart. So um, we had various countries organizing their internet governance forum. It began from the West African region uh, with Ghana, there was Nigeria, I think the Gambia also. And then we, moved, we saw other countries in um, Eastern Africa, that is um, um, Kenya, Uganda also doing some work in the space. And I think all that we've seen across, across the board is that there's interest of young people and um, we are now understanding what it means. You know, one of the questions that we've been hearing often is what is the role of young people in the internet governance space, especially on the African continent? So we have been able to establish that aside from um, just being attendees, we have the opportunity to bring together, uh, to bring to bear what our thoughts would be in the, in, the, in the whole IGF process, and also to make sure that beyond the event, we are also constantly engaging. So by way of insights, there is a learning, um, the learning angle that young people have been able to currently build up and um, based on the expertise we have, to be active participators in the process that we know um, on the continent, and then to be able to also go back to our communities to impact. So it's, a, it's the approach of a learner, um, approach of a learner turning into 
into a trainee and going into the community to also be a trainer, right? So I'm going to give right now some of the things we saw from the um, session in Malawi, which is exciting. We had one of the largest crowds, and I feel like one of the things that made it very important that people can attend is sponsorship. Usually when we talk about IGF and youth, we forget funding, we forget support for young people, um, it can be connectivity support, it can be travel support, but anything that would ensure that young people are present, we have to add it as um, things that are helpful for our participation. So we had the uh, Malawi event um, in Lilongwe, and it was under the team transforming the role of youth in a digital world, and we looked at challenges and also the opportunities. So one of the things that were pretty much um, big for us as young people on the African continent was issues of connectivity and digital illiteracy. We want to have people connected um, onto the internet space and um, have the benefit of the online space. But what, most often you want to ask the question, are they able to? Or what is the first step into having uh, people get into these spaces and have them um, maximize the use of the internet and maybe for their work or for um, education and, and whatnot. So now that we know what has happened or what has happened on the continent where we see a gradual increase of um, youth not just being attendees but also part of the process, we will we would, we would just um, ask that those efforts will be redoubled and this is why. We don't want just um, the representation, like maybe all, all, all the folks and one young person is available. We want it in such a way that it is integrated into the whole process. It shouldn't be a clear cut, a clear cut youth representation, but just based on the integration of what the expertise are to have young people infused in the process. Now, looking at this and moving into um, what the future of IGF looks like um, for Africans, um, African youth, for uh, even Ghana youth, it looks something like having young people who are um, well grounded in the process and are able to raise topics of interest for young people for discussions and are able to um, get the support to continue in advocacy or implementations of what the recommendations are post event so we've moved from that process of just pouring into the into the session but we want to continue it so people are able to see the results that follow right I think the microphone is full. Okay. So now we are uh, heading to Emilia. Uh, the question was, can you bring your insights for your countries and regions regarding your experience in the participation of youth in IG? Thank you. Okay, it's working. Thank you very much. Uh, and uh, first of all, uh, I would like to say that uh, what Lily talked about is uh, something uh, she made a few very very important points also that uh, I have uh, had the pleasure to participate in uh, a couple of uh, African IG events and uh, every time the engagement of young people was incredible so huge congratulations Lily uh, to Lily and to other facilitators of the youth engagement in the region and uh, I would like to tell you a few words about how the, situations, uh, how the situation of youth engagement looks like in Poland and also in the Eastern European region. Uh, so firstly, uh, maybe I will quick, quickly share with you the story of how uh, it has developed in Poland. So two years ago, uh, together with my two colleagues and uh, with Research Institute NASC, uh, we founded Youth IGF Poland, and it was, I think, the first organization of this kind in Poland because in 2020, uh, the Internet Governance Forum, the main uh, event, was supposed to happen in Poland. Because of the COVID, uh, it was moved to the next year, but we started our work. And uh, thanks to that, we have had almost one year and a half for preparations to the Internet Governance Forum. And also uh, what we wanted to achieve is to create a space in which young people would be able to prepare to the uh, IGF and to the Youth Summit that we wanted to happen there. And also uh, at the same time, we wanted to achieve some, um, you know, very particular, very specific results. So, that's why, why we started the Project Youth Summit. 
Firstly, we have had uh, free webinars to attract young people to get their interest uh, to the project. And they were focused on different aspect of, aspects of internet governance, like uh, universal access, green technology, education, artificial intelligence, and its ethics. And then after that, together with two organizations, one of them, me and Nicola Sinjana, has uh, a pleasure to represent today. So with Youth Coalition on Internet Governance and with Youth Standing Group, uh, we invited them to the cooperation and uh, we started the project. So the main idea was that uh, young people who would apply will be divided in eight working groups. Each of them focused on different aspects of internet governance. Uh, each group uh, would be led by more experienced youth coordinator from, uh, from youth coalition or youth standing group. Uh, and in those groups, they will create points of action. So kind of the policy papers focusing on what are the problems they observe in the particular field of internet governance, what are the potential solutions to those problems, and which stakeholders, particular ones or groups of stakeholders, could help in introducing those solutions, in bringing them into life. And uh, I think that we managed to do that. Uh, we had 80 people from all over the world participating in the project. Also, there were some senior experts engaged in it. They were mentors for the younger people. And we have had the Youth Summit in Poland as the, it was, I think, the first time at the on-site IGF when the Global Youth Summit was actually the part of the IGF, so it didn't happen before or after, but it was actually incorporated into the event. And we presented our points of action and got a lot of interest. So it was really, really great and it was possible only due to the common efforts of so many young people and that we could bring so many young people as equal partners. So, of course, you know, the project has to be led by someone, but also so many people has real influence on how it looked like in the end. So that's what we uh, did last year. This year, uh, as the Youth IG of Poland, we focused more on our regional uh, engagement. So we have had a few meetings. We have had the first Youth uh, IGF Poland uh, Summit during the main IGF Poland event. It was also uh, the first time we have had Youth Track there. And uh, that's what we are planning to do in the future. The next year, we want to hold more meetings, more on-site meetings for young people because still uh, youth people engagement in internet governance in Poland is quite low. Like there are a lot of people interested in new technologies from different fields, but they are it is very, very hard to get their attention. So that's why I also very happy I can listen to other uh, youth activists on how to bring this focus because this is something we need for the next year. And also uh, at the end of uh, my speech in this part is huge congrats from our colleagues from Ukraine who, even though the current situation in our country, they still had their national IGF a few days ago. So I think this is really, it is really incredible that they are still doing this great job they have been doing for, for so many years. So yeah, that's it. Yes, it's an incredible effort and also it's a challenge to, to get the youth participants to be interested in, in internet governance issues, right? So now we are flying to our online speaker, Shena Fung, that we talk a little about he, uh, her experience in the youth Asia Pacific. Uh, go, Shena, the floor is yours. Thank you so much. Thank you so much, Nicholas. Uh, can you hear me well? 
Great. Uh, thank you so much for the time. Um, I'll go into your instruction. I will try to summarize everything um, into 10 minutes. My name is Jenna Fung. I am the Digital Policy and Community Relations Manager of Dot .Asia Organization, which is a top-level domain registry. I, I was lucky comparing to so many other young leaders um, in my regions back in time because uh, because I get a full-time job here, I get to, uh, in the industry, I get to lead um, one online uh, online academy about internet governance for the youth in Asia Pacific, as well as leading the youth internet governance forum in Asia Pacific and Hong Kong since 2018. So this is officially my fifth IGF uh, so far, and from my personal experience, personal observation also, I believe I can uh, give some inputs also from a personal perspective also. Um, to respond to your questions, I think um, at this point in 2022, uh, I would say can't give too much insight from the perspective of youth in Hong Kong because the environment won't really allow um, any um, free discussions on anything so far right now. So I will basically share from the perspective as a youth and then as an individual in leadership in Asia Pacific. So uh, I think, first of all, I would briefly highlight what we have done in the Asia Pacific YIGF this year um, in September in Singapore. It's like finally after two years of pandemic, we finally get to meet face to face in Singapore. And because of many limitations in terms of fundings and resources, our usually three days, uh, four, three days, no, no, four days, three nights, sorry. Uh, you've come to empower our young people to participate the regional IGF, um, which is like the main conference we call, um, has been shortened into 1.5 day. So we really had had to do a lot of work to revamp our program quite a bit. Um, but this year, with the help of more than 10 uh, YIGF in our regions, we get to do it with a great success. And then this year, we, um, we get to have... Um, get to get some help from uh, coordinators or volunteers from different NRIs in Asia Pacific, uh, including Malaysia, Myanmar, Vietnam, and, and so many others. We get to do it successfully. And then, um, and then some organizations in Taiwan and um, in South Korea, they managed to fund the representative to participate in Asia Pacific also. So uh, that's a that's a new observations and model that we observe. Because for youth, um, financial barrier has been um, it's been the biggest topic or biggest like the highest or top. Um, barrier that we are facing. And as a leader that organized youth IGF for quite some time, like four or five times right now, I would say um, this is a big uh, achievement to realize a decentralized funding models, uh, maybe something that um, youth can seek because um, previously we tried to source sponsor to fund our fellowship program. Um, but we have always been facing lots of challenges, but this year, because uh, each of this organization been funding their own local representative and get their local discussion to the regional discussion table, we managed to get uh, at least like two to three more local representative of those jurisdictions or territory um, to participate in our program, which is uh, very, um, very inspiring and very exciting. Um, the topic of the Asia Pacific um, YIGF was youth at crossroad, trusting in a common future with no one's left behind. Because um, we believe the advancement of technologies and global internet connectivity has accelerated the spread of information, human process, and innovation across diverse area. While we are expecting the benefits of the important uh, improvement of the internet, uh, you know, and as well as the pandemic has changed our way. 
And also given the time or the age of the youth, usually they are in a, at a crosswalk feeling confused about the future. And then given the position we are in, in internet governance, we often feel very, uh, they're, they're unclear about the position. So that's why I think taking advantage of myself being in a re like a like an influential or leadership role in the youth community. Um, I think, especially as a coordinator of the regional youth IGF, I, I would like spend time in thinking how to improve the program by design to help like a, uh, to help youth to uh, stay engaged and then to also um, make policy making more accessible to youth that has been here for many for quite some times like a few years because um, continuing our capacity building or empowerment on newcom like for newcomers of course we have to continue and it's always important because that's one way to continue uh, to bring new people um, and bring more people in order to make our voice and the representative of youth more obvious at a you know a, at the bigger arena um, but for for a youth who's been here for like five years like me sometimes I feel like um, I know we need to get youth voice heard I want to participate in so many other discussions too, but then often we feel we like uh, we are lacking the knowledge. Um, one thing we identified was that uh, stakeholders should get more involved in filling the gaps, and then at the same time, building mutual understanding, um, you know, of different generations. Also, um, I think th that's like something as a leader we should work on to see how we can make policy making more accessible in, in a way is uh, to advancing youth with more experience in the internet governance world to have more knowledge on certain topics so we can actually contribute. So um, from, from the past two days of conferences and here in IGF, I also got inspired to think, um, think of more collaborations with like other NRIs, globally, regionally, um, as, uh, as well as like having more co um, collaboration with DC at, you know, the IGF scene probably should be one of the way that we can, um, we can uh, help advance that because we have lots of experts in here, which can fill out this, this, you know, this part, which I just raised it. Um, I don't know how, how much time I left, Nicholas, uh, but I will try to wrap up up here. Um, why, why IGF has been, um, it's been a platform, uh, that we use for in the past 10 years and it's been evolving every year. Uh, but this year we take advantage of finally getting to meet each other. Um, uh, we stress so much, uh, we, we try so hard in putting effort in, uh, making our, program program as inclusive as possible so hybrid uh, you know a hybrid form is needed um, we also try to get in uh, get more get some mentor involved to give them daily briefings during the main conference which is the Asia Pacific Regional Internet Governance Forum so they really get to uh, really get to participate in the discussion and this year we have lots of great like great improvement from the group was every year the Asia Pacific Regional IGF uh, they publish a services document and this year we have we have more than like 400 percent of increase in numbers of input from from youth because previously we encouraged them but no one really feel comfortable enough in actually typing in the comment and then contribute like they're just an other community member in the region so that's like a great achievement from the youth community in asia pacific um and other thing was with the support of all the nrs coordinators in our region we managed to have this uh, starting to be this um, momentum in having a, a new meeting, uh, more coordinations or action oriented meeting at YIGF uh, in discussing what NRI in Asia Pacific could do. I think this is something um, other region could uh, do more effectively. Uh, I was also taking um, 
taking, for example, Europe or Latin America as an example, because been here five years and I feel like Asia Pacific was kind of behind uh, for, for many reasons. And so uh, I think it's like a process for us to learn from each other also. Um, and, and then also, lastly, I probably should not uh, mention anything further, but this year we have youth statement and also we mentioned uh, a call for actions from the Asia Pacific Youth IGF organizing committee in our report. Uh, very different from what we have done before because um, because usually we just like discuss all the topics and put it into a report, send it to IGF secretariat, make sure it's on the website so other people can access, make sure our report is public on published online. But this year we add an additional session where the organizing committee can call for action from a perspective as a leader in, um, uh, in the youth community and then try to gather people who has an influential role in the internet governance world. Um, and so we can make a change with um, action oriented and then, you know, make real change um, at a different level, especially to those who who get to have and has a role um, in, in this community. Um, I think that's it from me. I have been talking too much also. I hope my sharing uh, gives you some kinds of insight and will help with our uh, discussion later uh, today at the session. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you so much, Shena. Uh, it's very good to see how you uh, sorted out all the challenges and also the Net Mission Academy that was something very wonderful. And having all the youth coordinators at the regional youth IGF is something that we have seen in, in different regional youth IGFs this year. And I think it's something wonderful to, to have this uh, kind of cooperation and collaborations. So now we are flying to Bruxelles in Belgium uh, for Veronica Picora. So tell us what, what, are the, what have been your, your experiences in, in youth in IGF. Hello, hello everyone. I hope you can hear me fine. Um, greetings from Brussels, from the heart of, uh, of Europe. Um, my greetings to people attending on site. I saw um, many people actually uh, attending on site and greetings to people coming, connecting from all around the world here online and spe especially um, to the Bangladesh remote hub. They are connected with us uh, and I can see them on the screen here. Um, so um, I had um, my points to share with you uh, today, um, but uh, I'm not sure I will be, be able to have the time to go through all of them. Um, so I will try to summarize them in some way. Um, I am Veronica Piccolo, I'm chair of the Internet Society Youth Standing Group. The Internet Society Youth Standing Group is uh, a global, um, it's uh, an, a group, an a interest group of the Internet Society specifically focused on young people. We have a global reach, but as an European, I'd like to share also some points uh, um, uh, related to my region and specifically to the West um, European, uh, you know, geographical uh, geographical space. I first of all, I'd like to debunk a myth, uh, which goes by that in in Europe we have many more opportunity to participate in internet governance processes than everywhere else. I'm not sure where this misconception comes from. Uh, maybe it comes from the fact that European countries are average, richer um, than others. But um, uh, you will see that there aren't many like opportunity uh, for young people, at least in Europe, to actually participate actively in internet governance discussion. First of all, we tend to think that we progress vertically in our participation, starting locally, so in our um, in our national IGA space, and then grow locally. 
that would be the normal way of doing things. But ironically, I did not start my, my journey in internet governance in Italy, nor in Europe. Uh, those who know me are aware that my training started thanks to an empowering program of the Internet Society called IGF Youth Ambassador Program. Uh, if you don't know that, uh, I hope that someone will post the link to the program somewhere. Um, I know that uh, they talk about this program during the CLX, um, and basically uh, it's a program on the Internet Society which selects 30 under 30 to participate to the IGF um, as uh, youth ambassadors. Uh, thank you, Nicola, for posting, for posting the link uh, um, to, to participate to, um, uh, to the IGF as youth ambassadors of the Internet Society. I believe that is one of the most complete and well-structured program that I've I have participated in and it's perfect for newcomers. It has online courses, live webinars, simulation and mentorship with experts. So in this regard, allow me like a minute to uh, say hello to Tracy. I don't know if he's on site, uh, but Inca is not just uh, uh, telling me is, uh, tell me I say hi because he has been a great mentor like in the past year for uh, the youth ambassadors. Um, and, you know, it, it has been one of my uh, mentors during uh, the mentorship track. Um, well, it has like mentoring, the IGF Youth Ambassador has mentoring with the expert like Tracy, but also peer mentoring. This year, the mentorship phase, phase has been carried out by the YCIG, the Youth Standing Group and the Gender Standing Group. Uh, some mentors are senior experts, but some others are former ambassadors. And we wanted to have that, you know, in order to create a link between past and present ambassador to strengthen the community uh, of the Internet Society, you know, you know and grow together. Then in Europe, we have um, the Youth Dig program. The Youth Dig program is a track or a training program for young people of the Eurodig. The Eurodig is the European Dialogue on Internet Governance. And for those who don't know it, it's basically the European IGF. Um, the Youth Dig program is a sort of um, shortened for youth dialogue on internet governance um, and uh, it's a program um, that's uh, that goes that it's built around uh, a training track I would say uh, we have training webinars uh, on top on topics such um, uh, that touch what's the internet governance is, the multi-stakeholder model, but also discussion topics like cybersecurity, disinformation, green tech, etc. This year, um, uh, I had the pleasure to co-organize the UTIC program uh, uh, co coordinated by Nadia Tiaia and with me um, there was like as a co-organizer Daphne that uh, she's a rapporteur in this session and during the youth day, today's event we had uh, the chance to you know uh, to allow our participants to learn more about disinformation and, and misinformation about cybersecurity, uh, mental health in the digital space, DLT and blockchain, but also environmental sustainability and how digital technology impacts on climate change, I would say. Uh, then the 30, then the youth the participants have the chance to come up with the messages. These messages are presented during the Eurodig. And what I really liked this year is that the youth dig presentation of messages was the only event, was an high level, like a high level event 
that means that it was the holy event happening during the Eurodig. So um, there was no simultaneous uh, session during that day. That allow us to have the full space, you know. Um, and then after the presentation of the messages, uh, this, there is a conclusion of the program. And usually alumni of the Eurodig get selected as organizers for the uh, for the next year the problem is that the two programs that i mentioned are in english um, english uh, is not my native language uh, in italy english is not a second language either it is very complex it's very complicated to get it, young Italians involved in internet governance spaces uh, because we cannot assume that everyone speaks English. The, and English is a huge language barrier for the participation. In Italy, we don't have any school of internet governance or any um, training or empowering program for Italian speaking people. We don't have fellowship that promote the participation of young Italians in discussion forums. Um, as uh, young people uh, from, uh, from a G7 and G20 country, we are not eligible for travel support to travel to the IGF, uh, for example. Uh, so um, also at national level, the participation of Italians are almost non-existent. And in this regard, I think the one of um, the thing that we should actually think about is that to focus a little more on training and empowering program at the national level because the impact is made locally. We can discuss in this IGF level like global forum, but the real impact is made locally and national level. And what Jenna said was very true. You cannot, as a newcomers, you should be able to navigate the internet governance space and you should have a training. Uh, you can, you know, if you have something to say, uh, that would imply that you also know how this ecosystem works. It's very important to have a, a training program that allow newcomers to understand the internet governance ecosystem, how it works, how the multi-stakeholder model in works, and how you can contribute and participate. The second thing, and then uh, it's my final word, uh, is um, what I always tell the people I uh, connect with that ask me for uh, for tips and recommendation in this space, uh, I always tell these things to my mentee um, or the IGF of the IGF use uh, ambassador program is you know you have to really participate in session that you really care about because the participation implied that you have something meaningfully to say. That's it, the real, the real importance, the real, um, uh, the real um, uh, import, the important thing of participation. Because if you attend session without having anything to say, it's like just wasting time. So just be aware of the facts that the internet governance space give you the space that you deserve, you have to you have to earn it. And in order to earn it, you have to meaningful contribute with something meaningful to say. So I will leave you here and uh, I thank you for your attention. Thank you so much. Thank you so much. Thank you so much, Veronica. Uh, it's good to hear about the youth dig, and we covered all the regions. Uh, in also, the youth like IGF happened on the day zero of the like IGF, so it's all the same format. Uh, the thing you say is very true, right? 
that the, the young people advocate for some of the topics uh, because we hear in the news some internet governance issues all the time. It's not really associated with the internet governance, but the, this is the space where the young can uh, advocate for their thinkings, uh, advocate for their... Uh, and all, all these spaces are designed for them. So that, that is the, the way they can engage, like uh, participating in the sessions that they are most... Uh, aware or that they are most interested, right? Uh, some words about the Youth Coalition on Internet Governance work this year. Uh, I am the moderator, but I will take the, the chance to, to do this. Uh, we worked an internal call for workshop proposals for youth-led sessions uh, for the ICF this year. We created five working groups in Telegram and several uh, calls uh, throughout the, the, the planning part of the sessions. And we submitted 13 sessions uh, with a lot of people from around the world, and 11 sessions were selected. So we had this year uh, a lot of sessions organized by the Youth Coalition and the Youth Standing Group joint. Uh, uh, I think this, this year was a very good opportunity for the Youth Coalition because all the, the members of the Youth Coalition were youth coordinators in their, in their regions, not only for the national, but also for the regional uh, youth ICFs. So, this combination of players, I think, have had a, a very good role in, in, in the development that we have seen. And also this year, we have organized three webinars that are fo were focused on like capacity building exercises for all the thematic tracks of the ICF as a preparation for the ICF. So people uh, were listening about advanced technologies, you know, enabling security and safety, connecting all people. So the different topics we, we have this year. So we have less than half an hour for the rest of the session. And we have a question for the Bangladesh youth. Uh, Maurice, our online moderator, is, is telling. So uh, please, the Bangladesh remote hub, uh, uh, you will have some minutes to, to take your, your insights or uh, what, what your experience in the, in the youth in IC. Please, the floor is yours. Thank you so much. Uh, this is Sada Kamujahan Diva from Bangladesh. I am basically uh, working with you guys here, Bangladesh, the chairperson. Uh, from this, uh, from our global, youth, from our youth of our country, I would like to ask a question. Uh, do IGF have any initiative or steps for the youth in our lives, especially dynamic solutions, DPFS, and policy network? For the South Asian countries like Bangladesh, India, uh, for achieving the goals of the global digital content. Thank you. Who want to address the, the question? Um, I think it was more towards Southern um, Asia. Um, so maybe she can take it, but I have general pointers as to what can, um, what you can do to feed into the data compact. So maybe the person from Southern uh, Asia can take it and then we can leave some pointers afterwards. I'm so sorry, I, I couldn't quite hear.